Good morning, brethren. The Bible reading will be taken from the book of Mark, verses 18, 21, and 22. I read from Mark 2, 18. Mark, Mark chapter 2, verse 18. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? I'll skip to 21. His second submission to them. He said, No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old. And the rent is made worse. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled. And the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. A new order had come. And the old brigade had to be put away. The new wine, the, the old bottles cannot contain the new wine. I look at all the operations of John the Baptist. He said, I baptize you with water. The one that is coming is baptizing you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The operations are different. Am I correct, sir? They cannot be mixed together. Even in the prayer, the new prayer is our Father. To our Father who art in heaven. The old prayer, you have to face Jerusalem and say, fall down and die. The prayer pattern has changed. The operations have changed. I looked at in 1 Kings. Immediately Solomon came with an order of peace. I knew the old brigade had to go. The Joabs, the Abiathas are men of war. There is no way you can tell Joab that you've made, 
you've made an affiliation with Moab by marrying the daughter. He can't take it. He's a man of war. So to establish that peace, you must take him out. And I noticed along the way, John the Baptist, <laughs> they took him out. He can't. That new order. And I want to take this opportunity. There's a new order coming in Nigeria with righteousness. We've been told before they've displaced all the ministers. They cannot come into this new era. And I pray that you will be found worthy as new bottles to contain new wine. The Lord bless his word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's time for confession. We'll be taking our confession from Psalm 15. Please say after me. I dwell continuously in the presence of God. I am ever present in his most holy place. I walk in the perfect will of God. I do only what is right in God's sight. I express my views always in wisdom and all honesty. I don't speak ill of people. I'll take that again. I don't speak ill of people behind them. I don't deliberately run anyone down. Neither do I talk of my neighbor's faults. I don't sing the praise of despicable people. I respect men that fear God and have integrity. I always stand by my word to honor it. My opinions are stable and based on the word of God. I am prudent and also charitable in my finances. I do not pervert justice, irrespective of any inducement. Because of these qualities that the Lord imbibes in me, nothing, absolutely nothing in this life moves me. I am firmly rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Taking a second Bible reading. Still in the spirit of moving forward. The first Bible reading will be taken from Genesis chapter 3. I'll read from verse 15 to 19. And it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and our seed, it shall bruise thy head, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy con conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and tissues shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. Now, Adam added rosy before he fell into sin. And after he fell into sin, God pronounced this judgment. So, one of the first point of call, I believe that um, Adam and God had maybe some things they had in plans that they were meant to do together, but that was altered after he fell out of the will of God. So the first point of call in moving forward is being in the will of God. Now let's look at another scripture. In Genesis 12, here again we see a similar pattern. 
I read from verse 1 to 4. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee. And I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken. Now the Lord said, Get thee out of thy country, out of thy kindred. Kindred means relatives. And so Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. And Lot, which is a relative, went with him. And Abraham was 70 years old when he departed out of Aram. Now if we jump to Genesis 13. I read from verse 5 to 15. It's a long reading. And Lot also which went with Abraham had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. For their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the headmen of Abraham's cattle and the headmen, headmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt then in the land. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between thy headmen and my headmen. For we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou would take the left hand, then I will go the right. Or if thou would depart to the right hand, then I will go the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. The Lord chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed his, and they separated themselves the one from the other. And Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the land in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after the Lord, after that Lot was separated from him. Now Abraham has returned back to the perfect will of God. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. So God is saying we can now continue on our course after you have returned to my perfect will. So the first point of call for anyone to move forward is to be in the perfect will of God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in church this morning? Please rise to your feet as we bless the name of the Lord. Just bless your God and just say, my God, I thank you. My God, I honor you. This morning, I bless you. I worship you. I give you all of the praise. Thank you, Lord, because you reign in the affairs of men. We thank you because you sit in the heavens and you still make the earth to hold still. Thank you for your peace, your love, your grace. Let my God be with me every morning. We bless your God. worship belongs to you. We thank you because you reign. We thank you because you reign. We thank you because you reign. We thank you because you reign, Lord. You reign, Lord. You reign, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah for the Lord God, the omnipotent reigner. Does he reign? Hallelujah. Let's leave it up. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Lift your voice and say hallelujah. Hallelujah.
and shout. No matter what comes our way, no matter what we do, no matter what goes through us, no matter what happens to us, Lord, this year, our song will be hallelujah. Our song will be hallelujah. seats on the throne and unto the Lamb we give you all the glory Lord we give you all the praise Lord we thank you because your goodness is everlasting and it's from everlasting to everlasting we thank you because your goodness is from everlasting to everlasting it is unchanging it is unchanging it is unfailing we bless your holy name, oh God, because your goodness is from generation to generation. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in God's presence this morning? Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good. Testify and say, God is good. Saying, Oh Mary, oh Mama, that God is good all of the time, in and out of season. He's good to us. Hallelujah. Are you ready? This is the song that says, Jesus, the owner of my life. And with you, all things are made possible. You have done it all for Oh, 
Jesus, you are good. You are good. You have done it all. You are good. You are good. Jesus, Jesus, you are good. You are good. You have done it all. You are good. Jesus, Jesus, you are good. You have done it all. You are good. Jesus, Jesus, you are good. You have done it all. You are good. Jesus, Jesus, you are good. You have done it all. You are good. Jesus, 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 you have done it all. Shout it. Jesus, 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 you have done it all. You are good. Jesus, 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 you have done it all. Oh, 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, please be seated. It's time for prayers. First, I want to pray for Nigeria. Welcome. Uh, I'll be taking the clues from the word. Um, I think I'll just continue with this. 
um, I take proof from the word and also from, you know, news. I mean, genuine news, just as my boss Mark said on TV. I take proof from there, I will pray for Nigeria. A major presidential aspirant came out recently to say he's uh, running at a particular party. I don't want to mention any names. You know. Before he came out, there's been warnings from clerics, you know, both the Christian clerics, the traditional clerics, that they should fetch if he runs. And he came out recently and says that he's running. But you know, I like to process information beyond the surface. I don't think he got to his political stature or wherever he is by chance. And I don't think he got there by not listening to instructions. So he must have sat down and probably divined and found out what it's going to take to advance whatever the people are saying is going to happen. Now, I've also looked at God. I find that when it comes to politics or issues concerning the earth, it's not about the will of God. Yeah, God wants his will. But nine times out of ten, it's not about the will of God. It's about the decision of the people. Now, if you look at 1 Samuel 8, I read from verse 6 to 7. Does God has made his will clear? Well, like I said, I'll say it from the word, the news, and personal revelation that God gave me. Our current president, I don't know if it's the will of God or not. God has not told me anything. But this major aspirant I'm talking about, God showed me, I saw it in a dream, that it's not the will of God. But like I said, it's not about the will of God. In 1 Samuel um, 8, 6 to 7, it says, But the thing displeased Samuel, when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, echoing unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should reign over them. So God is making it clear, this is not my will. But this is what the people want. So he's telling Samuel, Samuel is a kingdom. The Bible says that God does not allow the words of his mouth to fall to the ground. I expect Samuel to declare that the Lord shall reign over Israel and he shall be so. No, God said, no, let the people answer the people. I, I, we're praying, but I need to share something so that you can understand my point, where I'm coming from. First and foremost, I want us to pray for the people. You know, because from the information that I have and the things I see around, I find that the people have not learned. They've not learned. I want us to pray that God will remove the veil in their eyes. There's a veil covering these people. And they can't see the way we see things. You're trying to explain some things to some people, and you find that they are not. You're wondering, share, are you not seeing what I'm seeing? So I want us to pray. Are we, not, are we not going to pray for everybody? I was looking at the word, and in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, it says, "If my people." Now, so I'm not talking about general people. Now I'm talking about Christians. Say, if my people will humble themselves and call unto me and repent of their sins, say, I will heal their land. So I want God to remove the veil, especially in the eyes of Christians, that they may see from God's perspective. Please pray. Roman telegede brome delegede boshte heli brasso telegede bridge the halabran delegede de de romo telegede brashti hele brasso telegede de montolo godo brosse telegede boshte halabran delegede de 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 ro telegede boshte halabran telegede brosse le boshte mantu brosse heli brashte halabran telegede de de rosse da brashto heli brassan telegede de montolo godo boshte heli brasso telegede de 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 roman telegede boshte halabrassan telegede de rosti halabrassan tele boshte Whatever veil is covering your eyes, Masetelegede Boshta, Halabran Telegede, Rotelegede Boshta, political veil, spiritual veil, Masete Boshta, ask that you shred it, Rebosan Telegede Boshta, Mantelegede Prosemin Telegede, Rosete Blishta, Halabran Delegede, Rosama Telegede Boshta, Halabran Delegede, that Nigeria may move forward, Masuv Roste Helibra Santelegede, Roman Talagada Bosch. In Jesus' name we pray. I find that there are two ways that you can, you can remove, you know, not two only ways, at least ones that I found out for now. It's one by revelation from the Holy Spirit. You know, 
God reveals to you, don't go this way, go this way. For example, Paul was to go to a particular country. The Holy Spirit told him, don't go to this place, go to, for these people are not ready. He said, go to this place. So, one of the ways you can open people's eyes is through revelation. Another way to open people's eyes is to drive them to the extreme. The prodigal son didn't realize, he didn't want to acknowledge that he was out of the will of God until he was about eating with pigs. When he got to the extreme, then the veil of his eyes opened. So I want God to see. That if we want to move forward, there are certain things we have to understand. We have to tell ourselves the truth. Let's not do like this. If you want Nigeria to move forward, there are certain things we must go through. So I want us to pray that the ones that will listen by the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit reveal to them through revelation. The one that will not re- receive, the, let God drive them to the stream. In the name of the Lord. Please pray. Please pray. Rosa brasta halibrat sentele gede boshta Roman tele gede boshta halibrat santa la gara boshte rebo soto le gede boshte halibrat santa la gara man tele gede boshta halibrat tele gede brosta tele gede gede Ramon tolo gede boshta halibrat tele gede gede Motolo brosta halibrat tele gede brosta tele gede gede We call upon you, Holy Spirit, reveal your will. Mas soto boshta halibrat santa tele gede brosta to those that will listen. Mas se brosta halibrat santa la gara boshte rese mandi la gara brosta halibrat tele and we call on you, Father. The ones that won't listen, drive them to the extreme. That their eyes may be opened. And their hearts should be converted. And you heal our land. You heal our land. That this nation may move forward. Maso brushta halibras santa la garada. Roman telegede boshta. Lebristi halibras sala boshte. Mantolo brose delegede boshta. Montoro bose telegede boshta. Remanta la garada boshte. Reviso brushte halibras santa telegede. Montolo boshte heli brantele gedede romotolo boshte heli braso tele gedede rematala garadoshte heli brantele gedede in jesus name we pray you know i found out that there are several things that influences men's decision so let me let me say like there are seven things that influences men's decision uh, and uh, i'll go through a few of them i found that one of the things that influences people's decision is the activities of the other side let's look at luke 22 Activities going on on the other side. In Luke 22, from verse 31, it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. So, but I have prayed for thee. So, what informed the prayer was what Satan was planning. I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So, one of the things that was informing Jesus' decision, too, part time was one, the purpose of God, and two, he could monitor what's going on on the other side. In Luke 14, that's the spiritual, now we look at the natural again. In Luke 14, 31, it says, Or what king going to war, to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Or else, why the order is yet a great way afar off, he sendeth an ambassador and desired conditions of peace. So he had an idea of the uh, army on the other side. So he had an idea of the activities on the other side. Now let's look at Proverbs again. The Bible says, out of two or more witnesses shall every word be established. Let's look at Proverbs 1.7. Or 1.17, sorry. It says, um, surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. Why is it in vain? Because the bird can see what you are planning. So I want God to reveal whatever they are planning. To reveal it to his people, to the leadership of the church, to all Christians, that God will reveal whatever they are planning. It's part of of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. 
say searching all things and reveals to those who are loving. So I want God to reveal the things that they are planning so that they too will know how to counter plan. In the name, please pray. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, I find out that despite the fact that God may have kingdom machineries on ground, he may have custodians of his kingdom on ground, but he doesn't guarantee that God's rule will be perpetuated, uh, perpetuated. For example, like the example that I gave, there was Samuel on ground. If you study when Saul was anointed, there were council of prophets that I met on the way that I said they will give you this, they will give you this. Some of those prophets, too, those are kingdom custodians. But yet, they couldn't install David immediately. They had to install Saul first because that was the will of the people. So, one of the things that can save Nigeria is that we have a counter, a person that can counter all their strategy in personality, in spiritual sacrifice. Why I'm saying this? Because God revealed to me, before he came out to say that he wants to run, God revealed to me some of the sacrifices he was going to make for that city. He revealed it to me. And when I look at it, I, I'm not saying that Christians can't pay the price. I'm not saying they can't pay. But from what I can see, you see, see Christians only match here. That's just one of the sacrifices that he's going to make that they revealed to me. I'm not, this is not fantasy. They showed me before he came out to say, I want to run. At some last, like middle last year or so. And I found that if there are no Davids, there's nothing Samuel can do. Until God told Samuel, say, I found a man after my heart. That's when Samuel can now go and use his own machinery to install David. So I want us to pray for the Davids. Why I'm praying like this? Because God has not told me whether he has found somebody, whether he has not found somebody. The only thing he made clear to me, this person is not my will, but this is what this person wants to do. God has not told me whether he has had David, but I know that God always has 7,000 reserves. But the issue is, are they ready? So the question I want to ask, pray. I mean, what I want to pray is, if the Davids are ready, then let God begin to give them platform. In the name of the Lord Jesus, can you please pray? They need platform. That God will begin to stir up their spirit. For house of assembly, for governorship, for presidency, all the Davids. If they are ready, then Lord begin to stir their heart up. I'm beginning to give them platforms. Order their steps. To the necessary platform that they need. As you ordered Saul to meet Samuel, order their steps. For the platforms, for their for their spiritual impartations, Jesus' name we pray. 
one of the qualities that the Davids will have is that they can have a spiritual sacrifice that will counter whatever spiritual sacrifice those people to have made. Those are some of the qualities of the Davids. But until they rise, there's nothing they can do. They can just pray and live by faith. The Bible says, they told Abakov, say you live by faith, pending the time that God will use this David. Now, why I'm praying like this? Because God has not told me. So please, it's not unbelief. If God tells me I found so, then I'll pray for that person. Now, in I look at the the body language of the youths, of the people. I found that they don't want to have anything to do with anyone that has already been in power. Maybe you've been a governor or you've been a minister or maybe you've just a special assistant. They don't even want to hear. They just want fresh people. But looking at the word, I found out that in 1 Samuel 18, we're still praying for the David. Let's look at 1 Samuel 18. In verse 5. And the Bible says, And David went out wheresoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. So, if the Israelites were to say, we don't want anybody that has been part of this old government, they will miss David. Because he was, he was maybe chief of defense staff, or whatever you can call it these days. At one time, he was chief of defense staff. He was head of the army at one time. So if you say, oh, we don't want anybody that has had anything to do with this current government, we may miss it. So another prayer is that whichever way God wants to, which, whoever God is bringing, whichever place, whoever the person has associated with, let just God make the person acceptable to the people. In the name of the Lord, may the person be acceptable to the people. In the name of the Lord Jesus, can you please pray? Masovroshte heli brasante lege dede, masovroshte heli brasonde lege dede, vashada la garada. Ramasovroshte heli brasonte lege dede, masodevroshte heli brasante lege dede. That you prepare the hearts of the people to receive Him. Masotili brashta halabrante lege dede to receive as many as you have sent. Matoloboshte halabrante lege dede. The Davids of this generation, masovroshte heli brasante lege dede. Roma that will serve Nigeria according to the will of God. In Jesus' name we pray. I found that God had to strategically position David for him to be accepted by the people. Because one of the major um, issues we have with leadership decision making are interest. You find the interest of the party, the interest of the person running, the interest of the leadership of the church, the interest of the Islamic clerics, the interest of OPC. These are all these things that influences decisions. But you know, I found out in the Bible one time where almost the, decision, the interest of all the people were aligned together. And God just strategically put David there. Now, why do I say so? Goliath was harassing Saul. He was harassing the army. Even the priests, they can't really move. If you move towards any territory, the Philistines can just attack you like the bandits. The people were under siege. And God just strategically positioned David where all the interests aligned. And all everybody accepted him. So I want God. The same way he did it for David. Whoever he has sent, let him strategically position the person. That he may be accepted. That all the interests were aligned to that. The, one of the things that put our current president there, it was that it was aligned interests. The people were tired of corruption. The, the party was tired of the APC who wanted power. This one wanted the, everything that the church, everything aligned. And the man just was strategically positioned. 
let God to do a similar thing for the David. Can you please pray in Jesus' name? As many as you have ordained, oh Father, that you strategically position them. In Jesus' name we pray. One of these also I found that, you know, God's wisdom is very powerful. When Caiaphas said, it is expedient for one man to die, that for the whole nation to perish, it was not because of the interest of the nation. It was because of the interest of their pockets. But even in that selfish interest, God's wisdom found expression. I want to pray. Because nine times out of ten, when they are making these decisions, we are not there. You find the leadership, leadership of Kant, they are the ones there. Which, with all due respect, the little ones that I've had cause to interact with, I don't trust their integrity. It's my personal opinion. The ones that I've had to interact with, I don't trust their, their personal interest. I don't trust it. I don't trust their integrity. So you see, uh, their personal interest come into play, selfish interest and all those things. I want to ask God that in all their selfish interests, let God's wisdom find expression. In the name of the Lord, please pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And lastly, I want us to pray for ourselves. And like I said before, I said there are certain things that, so many things that influences people's decision. In the case of Rebecca, between Jacob and Esau, what influenced our decision was the purpose of God. You have some people, what influences their decision is the calendar of the earth. What influences Joseph's decision in Egypt with Pharaoh was the 14 years calendar of the earth that he had. Another thing that influences people's decisions, we say we look at seven, I'll just share four or five or so, is profit and consequences. In Deuteronomy 30, and I like the way the Bible puts it. Let's look at Deuteronomy 30. Verse 19. He says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You know, I like the way the Bible puts it. It is say, choose life because God said it. These people are not going to take those instructions because God said it. They are going to obey instruction based on the profit and the consequences involved in whichever decision they make. Another thing that influences people's decisions, like I said the other time, is the activities on the other side. But one of the things I found out that is similar to all these things is information. Rebecca knew ahead of time God's purpose. Um, the calendar of the earth, God revealed to Joseph, um, Pharaoh and Pharaoh to Joseph, the 14 years calendar of the earth. Um, profit and consequences. Here, yeah, God had to tell them that choose this and this so that you and your children can live in peace. The activities on the other side, like I said, God had to show to Jesus what Satan was planning against um, Simon. So I want God to give you the information that is necessary for you to move forward. 
that's necessary for you to take the decision that will move you forward. That God should reveal it to you in the name of the Lord. Please pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Please be seated. Amen. 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 I'll make um, three comments before I go to what I have to say, which is brief, which we'll also be praying. One from the scripture reading from Bamwewa, the second from his prayer, the one from Sister Thomas when she was worshipping. Let me start with Sister Thomas. <laughs> um, we follow strictly the word. In fact, God showed me that no ministry worked in this anointing from the foundation of the earth. None. So there is no basis of comparison to another ministry that the ministry, this ministry, the anointing has never existed. Only Jesus carried it. No other mortal carried it from the foundation of the earth. So everything is a bit different. In God's presence, you can be excited, but it's dangerous. Excitement means to be eager, but in excitement, you could lose the sense of order and protocol. For example, the kings of those days, you can be so excited, if you turn your back, they'll behead you. You can't turn your back. But he says, I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. When you are glad, you are eager, but with a sense of order and protocol. So you mustn't be excited in God's presence. You must be glad. And that's what the word says. Because in eagerness, in that state, you must be bold. You must be cautious. You must operate with a sense of awe and operate with divine protocol, yet be eager. But with excitement, you say, yeah! You could go off order, and that can cost your life. So in the true sense of it, in God's presence, we must be glad coming to God's house, not excited. Is that okay? <laughs> the one, he was praying for Nigeria. I was with the minister of God. He told me, he said, Karade, Jesus appeared to me yesterday. Then, the current president was the military head of state and said, this man, he pointed to the next man, is planning to rule Nigeria. He said, he must never get there. He said, it is not my will. And if he gets there, it will set the nation backwards. But he got there. He got there. And spent about eight years. But Jesus said he must, he told me, before he staged the school as a military man, he said he must not be allowed, meaning he was expecting the church to safeguard that place and not allow him there. But like our brother said, if the church don't do what they need to do, God will allow this demon that wants to come and rule to get there. And it will be another 100 to 200 years of backwardness. Our great-grandchildren will not survive it. It's a demon in human form. He may win the election. He will never, ever be sworn in in the name of Jesus. That's the second point. The third one from the scripture reading, which baffles me, which we need us to pray. God told Abraham from the onset, leave your father's house, leave your kindred, leave your relatives, and go to a land I will, I will show you. He took his father with him, but God was merciful to him. His father died on the way. Then he took Lot with him, which was also wrong. And Lot was with him. His father died on the way because father is old anyway. wasn't really a disaster. But if Lot died under his tutelage, that would be a disaster. Now, that was not God's will, so he needed to part with Lot. 
God brought prosperity into his fold and into Lot's fold as they were dwelling together. And Lot's flocks grew and his flocks grew and God kept quiet. That was God's message to him, part with Lot, but it didn't look like that. He had to think and say to Lot, your flocks have grown, mine have grown. Your headsmen are beginning to clash with my headsmen. If we continue to stay together, I don't want quarrel between us. So it's better we part. That didn't look like God giving him the opportunity to part with Lord. But that was God's message saying, part with Lord. Any human being that cannot project, that doesn't have wisdom, no common sense, will miss out with God. That didn't look like God telling Abraham, part with Lot. Lot's flocks just grew. And Abraham's flocks just, and God kept quiet. He didn't say a word. It's up to Abraham to design and look ahead and see a window from God. And God is bringing windows to people's lives. Now, how many people will see that? He didn't say a word. He had to think. Maybe he has been thinking of how to part with Lord, knowing that was not God's way, and he didn't know. He said, Ooh, what an opportunity. Now we're going to use this. You need to pray. Because he says, cursed is the man. He said, blessed is the man whose trust is in the Lord. Jeremiah 17. He said, but cursed is the man whose trust is in the arm of flesh. For when good comes from God, he will not see it. Not everybody can see that as an opportunity from God. He doesn't look like an opportunity from God. But that's his window to part ways. But it is initiated by wisdom, common sense, and sensible reasoning. And so I want us to pray for wisdom. Say after me, say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father give me wisdom, discernment, to read things ahead of time and act appropriately that will establish your will in my life in the name of Jesus. Please begin to pray. Malu sabraka taya moko lomodenye. Broko teke liboko suvraka taya manga liboko zekedia. E krede kebe ke teke 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 te. Mango loboko zika taya mande leboko kozia. Oro bobo 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 ya katali makatoro boko kozia. Kalimo zevre de ke zuma katata. I kalimo ko zende ke buku zakata ya makade. Oro bobo boko shekete ya kata. Kaya moko lumo ko zeke le kabo konde. Kura bakata ya makasekete. Kolo moko zianda. In Jesus name we pray. If you remember it was time to establish Joseph David. When he met Goliath, God didn't say fight Goliath. He just saw it as a window. And he took the opportunity and God raised him. Windows are going to come and God will not say a word. And you must know, you must know that the window has come and it will never come like a window from all what we have seen. When it was time for Rebecca to be married, it didn't come like a husband. It came like a service. And in watering those camels, a husband was there. And that's how windows come from God. That's why God must help you. So that you would see the opportunities God brings your way. Harness them. And harness such blessings. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Mark 11. It's one of my, um, actually it's one of the um, greatest scriptures on faith. I read first from verse 12, 12 to first 14. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, seeing a fig tree afar off. Having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. 
When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Then we jump to verse 20. In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remember and said to him, Master, behold the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. Jesus said to him, Have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, that's what I want to deal with today, the say, S-A-Y. Unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Faith is walking with God. And science has helped us to understand better that God is a super, super intelligent being. In Amos 3, I think it says, can two walk together except they be agreed? What parted men at the Tower of Babel is that they didn't understand their languages. If they understood one another, they would have stayed. And so faith is interacting with God, communicating with God, walking with God, and acting like God. And in order to do that, you need to know how God thinks, how God acts, how God behaves. For example, in Isaiah 55, he said, my thought pattern is so far from the ways of men. It says, like the heavens to the earth. That's how far it is. Say, my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So, we can't separate one major aspect of faith, which is speaking. The saying. But it's not just to say, because faith has a language. Faith has a pattern of expression. So, it's not just to say. In Matthew 8, I think from verse 5 to 13, we saw an expression of faith from the centurion. I don't know why. It's always been the unbelievers that seem to get it more than the church. Even in the time of Jesus, he was commending the Samaritans, the strangers, the unbelievers, the centurion. And he said, on the day of judgment, he said, these people will come and sit with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob on the table. And the sons of the kingdom will be cast out. Why it is like that, I don't know. I don't know. I remember once I gave up my car to my dad. He gave it to me to use. And I was telling somebody then to trust God. And she said, it's easy for you to tell us to trust God. I said, my whole father is on a wheelchair and a pensioner. He said, your father is rich. He gave you a car. I said, oh, I knew I had no message. So I returned my car, the car to my dad. He said, what's wrong? He said, is the car faulty? I said, no. He said, it was a Peugeot. He said, okay, do you want the Benz? I said, no, I don't. He said, did, he, did I wrong? He said, no. He said, I said, I have to, run, I have to return. The Christians said, ah, oh, they've come again. When they started church, they returned it. They want the church to gather money and buy another one. A Muslim across said, pastor, you returned your car. He said, then God is going to do a greater one for you. That's what the Muslim said to me. All the Christians said, ah, we know how you pastors behave. You went to return that car. It's a pojo. So that the church can buy you a base, Abi. <laughs> the Muslim said, Ah, he said, oh, Lord, he said, It's an act of faith to trust God. Those words, that's what the Muslim said. So I noticed he's been like that for years. Amen. Faith speaks but doesn't just talk because it has a pattern, a language, and a mannerism by which it expresses words. 
For example, if it's considered a badge of doubt, let's see if the Lord will answer us or not. The Lord will not answer that person. He says, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's go and talk to God. When he hears us, the word when is an expression of doubt with time, but an expression of faith with events, meaning the event will happen, but we're not sure when it will happen. But if means we're not sure the event will happen. So if is enough wrongly expressed to stop a miracle in somebody's life and end God's operation in his life just by using the word if. In Matthew 6, he says, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? He said, you must never say, what shall we drink? Wherewith shall we be clothed? He said, if you say these things, you will be in trouble with God. So, you can't separate faith from diction. And that's why people who are intellectually dull cannot work with God. Do you hear me? People who are not intellectually sound cannot work with God. And check all major expressions of faith. They were all just expressions of common sense. Wisdom gives expression in diverse ways and it gives expression in words. That's why with wisdom, you can know what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. Wisdom will guide you that way. And that's why they say faith has seven pillars. <clears throat> and one of those pillars is wisdom. Amen? If God gives you faith and you have wisdom, you can get away with anything with God in this life. Anything. It's not about whether you are nice or not. Even the people who are holy will not get away with anything. When God told Eli, he said, your lineage is doomed. He said, it is the Lord. Let him do what is right in his sight. When they got to David and said, we're going to judge your lineage, he said, I beg you, Lord. Then he gave and argued his case. Moses parted the sea. Moses brought ten plagues in his boy. He didn't know how to navigate with words with God. When God said he would not see the promised land, if it was David, they said he would not see. He would see that promised land. Listen, when you are faced with wisdom, God cannot have the last say in your life. You will. Because you will know what to tell him that he will agree with you. Did not God tell Moses and said, I will disinherit these people. They will not enter the promised land. I will destroy them. Did you hear what Moses said? He said, look God, the issue on ground now is this. First, you promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob concerning these people. So remember that promise. Number two, do you know what the people here will say? They say you were able to bring them in. You didn't have power to bring them. Uh, you were able to bring them out. You didn't have power to bring them. God said, ah, no, I'll take them in. So he argued a case, and his word prevailed against the word of God. <coughs> but when it came to him, listen, that one God said, we'll enter from He will enter if he knew what to tell God. He will enter. The God says, tonight you are dying. If you know what to tell God, you will live another 15, 20 years. If you know what to say. 15. You have man, uh, Hezekiah. He turned his face and began to, he said, but remember this, remember this. He said, Isaiah, go back. Tell him I've added what? 15 more years. It's not everybody that that happened to. As God said, tonight you are going down full. That night he was killed. Why was he killed? He didn't have the right dictions to express words to God. God, take your words seriously. And he has a way he can be appealed and you must know. I 
prayer is God will give you wisdom to express your words in dealing with God. He told the Syrophoenician woman, said, I'm sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I know your daughter is sick, she needs healing, but I'm sorry, I cannot attend to her. You're actually a dog. And see the expression she gave Jesus, said, but if you have a dog in your house, you won't let it die of hunger. At worst, the crumbs from your food, the leftover, is what they give to dogs. I'm not asking for the main meal. Can I have the crumbs? Jesus said, oh, woman, great! It's what? Thy faith. It's with words. Bob said she worshipped, they threw her away. She knelt and worshipped, they didn't answer her. Check it, Matthew 15. She came to the Lord, have mercy on me. They didn't answer. She worshipped, they didn't answer. If when she worshipped, when they now told her, we can't give the children's bread to dogs. And you are a dog. That's what her worship brought. But faith and wisdom said, I'm a dog. At least I know you are kind. You don't kill your dogs. You feed them. Give me the, your leftovers. Jesus said, oh, woman, great. Kaluma, Tanda. Great is what? Your faith. It's a function of what? Diction. Giving expression to words. The Almighty, let him descend. If you know what to say. He descends and if you know what to say, he will bless you that day. If he's coming with anger, I'm going to wipe out this one. As you said the right to say, ah! Because of this you said, I'll bless you. Oh, yeah, need that. He'll start praying for you. So you must always know what to say. You know, James 3 says, if any man, James 3, offend in all things and does not offend in word said it's perfect that is offend in every other thing but in word does not offend say that man is perfect i remember a man asked me how can i be perfect i said don't offend in words don't fail in words at every day he said what is, i said if you don't know what to say keep quiet he said your silence will be taken as good because they say a fool even when he holds his peace, he's considered what? Why? So he's still considered wisdom. So in your silence, if you give quiet with God, he will consider you wise and choose a wise decision on your behalf. So if you don't know what to say, no wonder Ezekiel went there and said, Can this boss leave? He said, I don't know what to say. He said, God, thou knowest. <clears throat> in 2 Corinthians 4 13, says, if you have faith, you will speak. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 says, we have an, the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. So you can't avoid speaking. And the Bible says your tongue no man can tame. So you can't stop speaking, you can't tame your tongue. So what do you do? In Romans 10, I read from verse 6 to 10. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh in this manner. So it has a mannerism by which it speaks. You know, sometimes you can tell an unbeliever for a, a, um, a carnal man, sometimes from some languages he will use, you know. For example, you are talking to a man and say, ah, then use the four-letter word. You say, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> you already know this guy is carnal, right? There's some languages some people will use, you know, this is an unbeliever. Some languages some people will use is most likely a believer. So, you know, you can tell from the way they speak. <coughs> Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead? What said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Then he went on, if you confess the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Now, I want to give you, to show you how serious what you say is in the ears of God, in Numbers 14. Numbers chapter 14.
I'll read from verse 1 to 3. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, Would God, please take note. Who did they speak to? Moses and Aaron. Not to God. Moses and Aaron. Please take note. The whole congregation said to them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt or would God we had died in this wilderness? Take note. Out of anger, they said, Oh, if only we had died in Egypt or in the wilderness. Remember, when they told Philip we've seen the Lord, you know it was like a joke. He said, me. Until I put my hand inside those holes. I thought, I won't believe. When the Lord appeared, I said, Philip, come forward, come forward. Oh yeah, come and feel the hands. He wasn't saying it to God. He was saying it to his colleagues. So what you say to your colleagues enters the ears of God. What you say to the ministers of God enters into the ears of God. There's a difference here. Oh God, if I touch it, no. He said, leave that story. Peter, and I don't come again. Me, if I don't put my hand inside those holes, the hand and the side, I lie. I won't believe. He told his colleagues. When the Lord appeared, he took it that you told me. They told Moses, would God, we died in the wilderness, uh, in Egypt, or the wilderness, meaning they are asking to die in one of the two. To Moses and Aaron. And verse 3. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children will be a prey were it not better for us to return to Egypt? So if you go on to verse... Um, I don't want, no, let me jump to from verse 20, but let me jump to verse 26. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel with the murmur against me, but they were murmuring against Moses. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. So he said, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. So he chose them to die in the wilderness for them. He didn't choose Egypt because he wanted them back. He said, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness and all that are numbered of you according to your whole number from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless you shall not come into the land concerning which I swore to make you dwell there and save Caleb and the John of Shephun and Joshua, the son of Nun, but your little ones will I bring into, and it went on and on. So, in verse 20, 32 again, but as for you, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. Let's jump to verse 2 again and hear what they said. And all the children murmured against us and said, and the whole congregation said to them, Would God that we died in the land of Egypt, or that we had died in what this will die? So it was specific. It was specific. They were talking to Moses. They said, I have chosen the wilderness for you to die. You ask for one of the two, you will perish in the wilderness. That's what he told them. So there are no careless words in faith. There are no jokes. I didn't mean it. No, God means it. He means it. And he's going to take it off. Am I communicating? Yes, That's why people who talk too much can't walk by faith. In fact, it's a disaster waiting to happen. In Judges 16, I guess this is just to establish first and foremost that you can't just open your mouth. I'll read from verse 28. You all know the story of Samson. He's been arrested. His eyes had been plucked out. I asked myself, Samson was tired. He was by the wilderness. There was no water. He cried to God. The rock cleaved and brought water out for him and he drank. I don't know why he can't make another attempt to ask God 
to bring back his eyes. I don't know, at least make the attempt. Verse 28, something called on the Lord and said, Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once. Why do you have God to strengthen you once? <coughs> he did strengthen you, he's always strengthened you. The condition is for your hair not to be low. Your hair has grown. Your hair has grown. So why are you asking once? Is what you're asking you do. Strengthen me, I pray thee this once, O God, that may be at once avenge of the Philistines for my two eyes. He is praying for vengeance. He's not praying for restoration. And Samson took out of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, of which it was born up of one of his right hand and the other of his left. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. He bowed himself with all his might. The house fell upon the Lord. All the people that were therein, so the dead he slew at his death were more than those he slew in his life. Now, did God answer everything? He said, yes. Did God strengthen him? Yes. Did God avenge him? Yes. Did God, he asked to die. Did God let him die? Yes. So be careful of what comes out of your mouth. Am I communicating? God won't say you didn't mean it. He believes everything you said you mean. Okay? When we speak well, God commends us to show that God is meticulous about what we say. <coughs> Kings 3. I'm just laying the foundation. I'm going somewhere. I'm just laying the foundation, which I'm still going to continue from next week. Um... First Kings chapter 3. I'll read from verse 5 to 11. Now, Solomon had just offered a thousand bulls to the Lord. What did the thousand bull do? What did the woman, the Syrophoenician woman, she worshipped the Lord. What did that do? The Lord gave her attention and told her the reason why he can't do what she asked for. That's what seeds can do. That's what worship can do. Now here, <coughs> excuse me. Solomon had offered a thousand bulls to the Lord. So the Lord showed up. That's what the sacrifice has done. But the fact that the Lord showed up doesn't mean anything will work. In Mark 14, or so is it 14? Jesus went to the house of Simon the leper. To do what? To eat. On that table, Jesus sat. He's the host. He probably invited Jesus to come and eat. And Jesus came. He's the host. Simon the leper sat with Jesus on the table. There was no evidence that he got healed of leprosy. Jesus left there and he remained a leprous. So Jesus appearing to you is still not the solution. After he has appeared to you, what conversation took place? What did he say and what did you say? That's what I will ask you. Say the Lord came wearing white, leave the white. His hair was gold, leave the gold. His eyes were like fire, leave the fire. When he moved, everywhere was earthquake. After the earthquake, what did the Lord tell you? Nothing. Then go and sleep. I'd rather you don't even see anybody and the Holy Spirit tells you something than all the vision and you didn't hear anything. And after he spoke, what did you say? I, that's more particular for me. <coughs> you know, people get excited. They saw the Lord. It's okay. <laughs> now the Lord descended to Solomon in Gibeon, verse 5. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God asked, ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, you have showed thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of, instead of my father, or David my father, and I am but a little child, and I know not how to go out and come in. 
And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great people? That's what he told God. And the speech, what? Pleased the Lord. So some people will talk, and their speech will what? Anger the Lord. May that not be your portion. Some will speak the speech word anger. Whenever the Lord is pleased, he will respond. When he's not pleased, he will make keep quiet. <coughs> and you know what happened? And God said to him, because you have asked of this, you didn't ask for long life, I will do what you ask for, then I will add this and this and this, and, and the Lord was adding. Why? He was victorious before the Lord in utterance, diction, speech. In what he said. In Abraham, in Genesis 22. Um, I read from verse 1 to 8. Genesis 22. Are you following me? You are. Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass. That's God had told him to go and offer Isaac as a sacrifice. And two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, cleared the wood for the burnt offering, rose up, went to the place which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, saw the place afar off, and listen, Abraham said to his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. I and the lad will go yonder and worship. Please take note and see Abraham's navigation with words. God has said, Go and offer Isaac as a burnt offering on the mountain which I will show you. He had seen the mountain. God had also told him, In Isaac, shall the earth be blessed. So Isaac cannot die. It's like God says, Isaac, it's like God says, this, your son, is one in whom the earth will be blessed. Then you just receive report. He has what they call a terminal cancer. What you say next may decide whether he will live or die. He said, I and the young lad are going to worship yonder. <coughs> and I and the lad, it was clearly defined, not I only. <laughs> I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. That was spelled out clear. Then Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it upon Isaac his son. He took the fire in his hand, a knife, and they went both of them. And Isaac spoke to Abraham his father. My father, he said, here am I, my son. The fire, the wood, where is the lamp? He didn't say, you are the lamp, but God will bring us back. No. Hmm. You must have wisdom to give expression to what God says. And he said to the young lad, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. What happened on that mountain? God provided exactly as Abraham said. If they had said, you are the lamb, then God would, um, I'm going to kill you. Then God would, he would kill Isaac and God would raise him back. That's what he's, he's not going to, there's no lamp will show. No, 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 no. He's going to kill Isaac and God is going to raise him back. Is what he said that God followed. God will provide a lamb. God provided a lamb. Ah, the young lad will go worship and return. He and the young lad returned. Hallelujah. So be careful what you say to colleagues. Why? He's entering into the... Is when the children of Israel, when Philip, I keep telling you, Philip didn't speak to the Lord. He spoke to the disciples. And the Lord took it personal. He responded to it. The congregation spoke to Moses and Aaron. God said they've spoken in my ears. 
So, you know, I just told uh, Brother Femi, no, you told God. Ah, baby, I just told uh, Femo, God said it will not work again. From now on, it's not going to work. It's over. You have spoken in my ears. It's done. It will never work. And that's the end of that project. But it's family you don't know. God said you spoke it into what? We see from the scripture. It where? My ears. So there's no Femi. There's no Franco. There's no Jojo. There's no Yems. There's no Beams. There's no uh, Aka, Omo, something. No. It's all God. It's all what? God. In John 11, just looking at, I shared this some time ago. We'll look at it again. John 11. And we see how Jesus was navigating words. And the situation will change, he will navigate it again. The situation will change, he will navigate it again. <coughs> A certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany. The town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment, wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister sent unto him, Jesus, saying, Lord, behold him whom thou loveth is sick. When Jesus heard that, this is the first statement Jesus pronounced concerning Lazarus. This sickness is not unto death, meaning this sickness will not lead to death. So what happened? Lazarus died. <laughs> Lazarus died. Some people will come and maintain what they first said. I said this. No, he has died. You have to know what to say next. This business will make profit. It has collapsed. It will make profit. Shut up. It has collapsed. What are you going to say now to make it have profit? Because a collapsed business cannot make profit. And so you must know how to navigate with wisdom words. My daughter will not be sick. They tell you she's already sick. I said, my daughter, that's a fool. My daughter will not be sick. Oh, God. They just had a test. She has malaria. She has typhoid. She has water in the fluid, in the lungs. What do we do? Hey, my daughter, shut up. She's sick. So what do you say next? That God will still take that you are in faith. Jesus said, this sickness will not lead to death. But God will be glorified and the Son of God, which is me, that's him, will be glorified thereby. So there are three things that will happen. The sickness, this man will not die. I, that, not I, the Lord Jesus will be glorified. My Father will be glorified. One has failed already. He has died. But that doesn't stop Jesus from being glorified and the Father from being glorified. So what did he do next? <coughs> when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days in the same place where he was. And after that, he said to the disciples, let's go to Judea again. His disciples said to him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee. Goest thou hither again? Jesus said, answered, are not there twelve hours in the day? If a man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. This text said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. He's dead. He said three things. He will not die. Jesus, I, will be glorified. God will be glorified. Like you said, this business will make profit. I will enjoy it. My children will enjoy it. It has collapsed. But you can still enjoy it. Your children can still enjoy, but it has collapsed. So you need to know what to say in that collapsed state. Jesus said, after knowing Lazarus was dead, he said, Lazarus, what? Sleep. He didn't say he's dead. He sleep, meaning 
I will still be glorified. The Father will still be glorified. So when you say a word and the blade comes out and it comes out wrong, you must know what to now give it get so that when the stuff comes out, it will realign. Because the fact that the first word fall doesn't mean the second will not come to pass. The first word you have spoken is the mannerism and the wisdom by which you will intend to achieve the second and the third. He intended to achieve the second and the third through healing of Lazarus' sickness. The father intended to achieve the second and the third through miracles, not healing. So the process through the healing failed. But upholding the second and the third, you can't keep the force which God has already done with. And you're sick of it. He's not sick in Jesus' name. God said, you, this one is not ready to move forward. They will leave the man and move on. He's sick. He will not die. He's dead. What did he say? He's sleeping. Meaning. Are you getting it? That's why when a man has no wisdom, his faith, as he's given expression, losses are coming. Losses, he will make no profit and it will amount to nothing. And so wisdom is saying now, Lazarus sleepeth. Then he said, and I go to do what? To wake him out of sleep. Kai. That why? I will still be glorified and my father will also still be what? Glorified. One has failed, we're keeping the other two. You know how most Christians, you still hold the one that's failed. And then nothing works again. That's why all intelligent people cannot work with God. All done and die. You can't work with God. What's for you? You can't work with God. No. You can't work. They can't enter the holy place. They cannot. Where we want to go to it. No, that's, that's. No, no, no. It's too intelligent. I ask myself, what gravitational pull is making the earth round and the sea is by the side and it's not falling off and the sea is under and it's not falling off? Which the best sign can say is gravitational pull, pulling water. <laughs> what is this? What is this? That's the God you want to walk with by saying, if you wear with one, you die. He says that, do you know where the pillars of the earth? He said, I know. He said, do you know what is it suspended? He said, I know. That's the God you want to sit down and deliberate. It's like you want to talk to a Nobel Peace Prize winner on literature. You want to talk to a literature Nobel Peace professor. Then you sit down. <laughs> eh? Then you are talking, you know, uh, this teller, when they saw, you know the say, how, how did you and I get to sit? <laughs> or oh, you're talking a banking guru. Expert, financial magnate. They are talking, um, you know the problem? This is our Naira. They need to remove that uh, Q by that corner. When they remove the Q, it will fly well. Excuse me, please. Uh, bye bye. Please tell your father I came. He won't talk to you. There's no basis for interaction. That's how God is with a dollar, intellectual dollar. There's no basis. That's a lawyer, which is the greatest commandment. He said to love your neighbor with all your heart and your mind and your strength and to love God. He said it's better than all the bond offerings put together. Jesus, see, he answered intelligently, said, you are close. You are not yet there. You are approaching the kingdom. You are not... You, you, it's not about going to a mountain to fast for seven days. Say so you are a moron on that mountain. He said, when you finish fasting, the intellectual, they would, they would root you out of, out, out of anything. So the children of this world, wiser, intelligent, than the children of light. <coughs> I had a slight domestic accident, and I called a friend, Say, go to the pharmacy, get this, get this, get this. While going, <laughs> my mechanic is a Muslim. He reminded me, he said, but pastor, I know any non-professional for anything. You always use the best. 
You tell no one more shame. That's the best. You know, someone take me there. <laughs> then I remembered. He said, I've anointed Bezali and Aholia. Then he said, he didn't just finish. He said, for their what? Skillful car. They are not just learning trade. I won't anoint morose. It's a part of the problem. You put novice with pampas on the podium. Say, that's why you're all like the way you are. So I won't anoint Moro. Say they are skillful. Check out. Then he began to mention their skills. He won't anoint, he won't anoint somebody who is not skillful. No. So the navigation with words of Jesus, you could see wisdom. Wisdom playing out. When they go to the tomb. And he said they should remove the stone. They said, ah, by this time he's thinking. He didn't even answer them for that word. But hear how he prayed. Verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. And I knew that you heareth me always. But because of the people that stand by, I am saying what I am saying, that they may believe you have sent me. What's that prayer implying? You are the tomb. You can see what is already implied by the prayer. It is a father, I've come today. Lazarus is going to wake up in the name of Jesus. Oh God, as I have come today. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have uh, sisters here that when they talk to their children, <laughs> they use I. You know, your daughter comes with you, and someone says, oh, please take this rice. <laughs> That's not the time. Say, don't touch it in my house. And you are my sister. Ah, are we not enemies? Abby, when I told you, she just look at the daughter. Hmm. The language is clear. Say, no, sorry, Pastor, I can't take it. Say, what's the problem? Then, well, tell her, take it now. Take it. <laughs> But the expression of the face means, don't you dare. That's what Jesus did there. He said, I thank you. <laughs> you know, we Nigerian Christians, the way they get there. Say, Father, I want to pray. Hmm. Today is today. Oh, God, it's unbelief. That body will not wake up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> praise God. Oh, Jesus. I thank you you heard me when I prayed about this case three days ago. I thank you because you always hear me. Why I'm actually saying this is not to let you know that you heard. It's just for these people to know <laughs> that you sent me. Uh, please move out of the way. <laughs> uh, uh, jo, please, uh, please move out of the way. Please move. Thank you. You've heard the prayer I prayed. Yeah, we heard you. That's all. Please stay by the side, please. Case close. Case close. It was Nigerian now. Father, I want to thank you that when I prayed, though the case didn't go the way I wanted, but we are back to the same place. <laughs> God see, what's all this? What's all this noise? I also want to thank you today hmm, because in this Lazarus, people will know today when we are done here, ha, they will know that you are God. They never disputed this God. It's you they dispute that they sent you. I mean, you are the one telling that God sent you. They tell you they believe in God. They will tell you they go to Messina because of God. They are eating Passover because of They believe in God. But I will say, even the demons believe and what tremble. If they don't believe you are the son of God. So leave that one. They said, I have prayed that they may know that you sent me. Our prayer has seen. Please move out of the way. Uh, please, can you please move out of the way? Last! The call, come out. We already said you are what? Sleeping. You are not dead. You are what? Sleeping. What do you do to people sleeping? Yeah, today! Nine o'clock! Is that how you do it? Somebody that does that will have the dead race faster. That the one that's saying the name. You said he's sleeping. So why are you praying as if he's dead? Check the next one. Lazarus, come out. That sleep don't do. Eh? You don't wait in. Come out. 
If it's not, you be fought. The pastor said, he sleepeth. That's what they say. No! Kulaska! Lazarus! Is that how you wake people that sleep? With tongues? <laughs> it's called faith and expression of wisdom. As a message to the Almighty that this is my stand. Take off my stand. If it's faith, answer me. Which is what we see here. And that's what God will be looking at. When you say you have faith, he's looking at your works, whether they're giving expressions of wisdom so that you believe or not. Even when you are spoken and it seems to have fallen down and not working, he's going to watch what you're going to say next. I'll stop there today. I'm still going to continue. We look at um, we look at aspects like, you know, when Elijah said, "I hear the sound of abundance of rain." Run! Then he went to pray. You know, he told the boy, "Go and check what you see." Some will call that unbelief. <laughs> we'll look into details, and we we will come to that later. But we'll take a prayer point as we close. Psalm 19, verse 14 says. Let the words of my mouth, I'm not sure we understand fully what that means, is the difference sometimes between life and death. Let the words of my mouth. You saw how that woman came to meet Elijah when they told her the son was dead. And then she came to meet Elijah. Say, she didn't say, <laughs> no, I don't use personal. Say, <coughs> See, her son is dead. No, she didn't even say he's dead. Say, did I ask you for a son? You gave me one. Why am I sorrowful? Ah. Allah did. Elijah. That's why the pastor must be sound of wisdom. He must pick it right there. That something is wrong. Kai. And she told the husband, I'm going to see the man of God. Say, ah, it's neither um, Sabbath. No, new moon. What I go? He said, it is where? Carl leave. It is what? Where? He didn't say, our son is dead. You know, I'm sure she knows if she says that. He's going to compound the situation. He's going to complicate the situation. And he's going to make the situation more difficult. Say, our son is where? I'll be back. Carl. Took the, and went to the man of God. Held his cloth. Save me, I'm grieved. The man knew that the problem of this woman can't be money. Neither is no business. Say, how is the boy? Say, Gehazi, go and meet the boy wherever he is. Give me the situation report. Gehazi came back. The boy did not leave. Yay! The boy did not leave. Kai. How did Elijah have such a servant? Elijah, how did you have such a servant in your fold that comes to give you such a report? If it was a military, they were executing straight away, right there. Remember what uh, Dajuma said? He said, when they sent Babangida to quell Oka's coup, said he came back and said he couldn't penetrate. Dajuma said they should have executed. You kill him on the spot right there. Bam! How dare you? You come and say, we need reinforcement. We need this. And it, not that we can't, hey, yeah. even in spiritual, you, it mustn't leave. The boy did not leave. Kai, Jesus, shouldn't hang around such people. Elijah went there, prayed. The boy didn't leave. He paced up and down. He was praying. No, no negative, no. <laughs> Psalm 19 verse 14 says, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be what? Acceptable to God. Meaning, the words of your mouth may not be acceptable to him. May find it offensive. And say, I am angry at your words. And that can bring a reaction from the Almighty against that person. In Colossians 4, 6, we want to pray these prayers. 
Let your speech be always with what grace, seasoned with salt. So the prayer is first, Lord, let my speech be seasoned, be with grace and seasoned with salt, that it may be acceptable before you. Everything is acceptable to men. Ah, Man will accept anything. God won't. So the fact that men accept doesn't mean God has accepted. The second prayer is that, that the first is that your speech will be with grace, seasoned with salt. You're going to ask for that anointing today in the name of Jesus. Then the second one is that it will be acceptable before God. And the third one is Isaiah 50, from verse 4 to 5. That should give you the tongue of the learned. The tongue of the learned. The tongue of the learned. Learned before God. So that at any point in time, when you open your mouth, everything that comes to God will be pleasing unto him. Pleasing, 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 pleasing. I remember Kenneth Hagin was ministering to a man who had a bent back. He said the man could not lift himself. He said when they called for the healing, the man came forward and God showed him a vision. He saw a demon sitting at the back of the man. So when the man came, he said, you demon of unclean spirit, <coughs> There's plaguing this man. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Come out of him and leave him right now in Jesus' name. Then the man said, see if you can stoop down and rise. The man couldn't move. See if you can stoop down. Come on. He couldn't move. Ah. He said, okay, let me pray with you again. So I saw the demon. I bind you, spirit. Come out. Oh, yeah. Try and bend. He couldn't bend. He did it three times. He said, go back to your seat. He said, Jesus appeared. Looking angry. How many of you read that book? Read it in the book? Read it. He said, Jesus was angry. He said, I said in my name, the demons will go. He said, but Lord, you saw me just now. It's your name. It's not my name I use. It's your name, Jesus. J-E-S. I added that one. <laughs> the way communication goes for one, it, it changes, right? Never goes exactly. Ah, boy, oh, 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 so the man was going, he now knew where he missed it. He said, if. Ah! He said, come back, come back, come back, come back. See what was stopping the miracle. If. He said, I bind your spirit. Lose this man. Get out. Now stand. The man stood and was perfectly well. That if he used block the miracle. That's how people's miracles have been blocked since. Many of you, some of you. <laughs> Just Ali saw. That Ali saw has blocked some people's breakthrough in this life. That's what Kenneth Hagin used. If, see if you can rise. The Lord said, that if you put, didn't, get him, didn't let him get his healing. That if you, you read the book, Abi? He said, that if, you went in and pray for him, he said, now stand, you are healed. Rise. The man stood, walked. He said, the man ran all over the place. The place erupted and people were shouting and screaming. That first word he said was unacceptable to the almighty. The second one, the fourth one he now said was acceptable to God and the man got healed. The demon, was it bound? Yes. Was it cleared? Yes. What stopped the man getting well? If. If. The Lord give you the tongue of the learned. May he Put grace in your mouth, season it with salt, 
Make it acceptable unto him. In the name of Jesus. As you open your mouth, may the Lord feel it. In the name of Jesus. May he be pleased with your words. Your utterances. In the name of Jesus. I want you to begin to pray. Pray and say, Heavenly Father. Give me the tongue of the learned. Make my mouth filled with grace. Season it with salt. Let it be acceptable unto you. In the name of Jesus. Mukusanda li se brede ke tolo mundu. Orobondo loboko koteti. Crede le bakataya mande. Olomondo loboko ze. E kalima makatanda. Olobobondo loboko ze. E kalibo si brede ke te ya mande. Orobobondo loboko kosia. Olobondo loboko kosia. Akayamande le boko kote. Olobondo loboko ze. E brede ke tete. Ebre do ko zuma kataya mande. Olobondo loboko hia. Ma kataya mande le boko ze. Mande le boko zuvra kataya mande. Orobobondo loboko ze. E li kaba kataya mande. Olobondo loboko ze. E le ba kataya mande. Urabaso. Mange li kasa kataya makuse. Karabaka tolo moko zia. Kaya mando ze. Kondo loboko zia. Ayama katatata. In Jesus name we have prayed. One more prayer point in Matthew 16. The Lord asked Peter, who do men say that? He asked the disciples, and they were giving different answers. He asked Peter, who do you say that I am? He said, you're the Christ. He said, my father gave you that word. Peter, you know, you're not intelligent enough to answer that way. It was my father who asked you through me, and it was my father who gave you the answer to me. I want you to pray. Say, Heavenly Father, Always speak through me to yourself. Use my voice to give expression to what you want to hear from me in the name of Jesus. Pray again. Malusa brakataya mango lobogozi e grevu sumadakita kalivo sombo kotete. E le moku zangali ka boko robondo luge. E kayama katono kusa katata. E kayomo kole neke zivre deke te. O kusa kalimande. E bre deke te te. O robondo loboko zia. O robondo loboko zia. E vre deke taya bango. Ukaza kataya mango. E leke boko ze. Kaya mando. Korobondo. Kia ba katolo boko zia. Ayama kale boko ze. Kolomon sovrodokozia. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I pray for all the words you will need to utter this week. It says that is in Ezekiel chapter 2. It said, I was sitting down and I was musing in myself, and his word entered into me, and the spirit came inside of me and stirred me up and I spoke. God's word will enter you. Yeah. And God's word by his spirit will come out of your mouth yeah. and go to God yeah. and he will honor it yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. He said to Ezekiel, say this to these bones. And Ezekiel said to those bones, and the bones lived. He said, then prophesy breath to them. Then he prophesied breath, and they became an exceeding army. That's a monumental problem that has defiled all solutions, but can be resurrected by saying the right word into it. My prayer is God will give you the right word Amen. for every challenge you are facing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Send your word, O oh God. Send light into this world, O oh God. 
Koya kula kata ya mandelekeze. Kruza de lima kata. Hiya mako. He's telling Ezeke, there is no problem in this earth. The only problem is knowing what to say. If you know what to say, it will answer to you. And it will respond. Dry bones are dead carcasses for generations. Forgotten. Some, they don't have memory again. It came back to life. The problem is what to say. You will have what to say. And what you say will please God. And God will honor it. In the name of Jesus. I ask God Almighty. Is it Isaiah? Said, I'm a man of unclean lips. Then one of the seraphs took the life coal and brought it and touched his lips and said, your lips are now cleansed. That God will clean your lips. Yeah. Bible says of Jesus in Isaiah, said nothing defiling was found in his mouth. There was no word of offense in his mouth. That God will sanctify your lips. Yeah. That nothing defiling will come out of it. In the name of Jesus. They will cleanse it. Purified. Sanctified. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. We we'll give you praise. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Anyone who's watching with us for the first time, if there's anyone who's watching with us for the first time, can you please be up to find it? 